I'd like to read from Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Uh, this is a psalm that contrasts the godly and the ungodly. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Uh, that's our prayer this morning, that we're firmly planted, um, that we uh, um, don't wither on the vine, so to speak, and um, uh, that we yield fruit in its due season. Uh, why don't we stand for a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray that you would visit each and every heart here this morning. Uh, thank you for this word. And we pray that we would prosper in you. Uh, thank you that you've given us everything in this life uh, for godliness. And we... Um, so we, we give this time to you, Lord, and we pray that you would visit each heart, that you would visit our church family, and that everything that would be said and done today would be to the glory and the praise of Christ. And God's people said, Amen. you may be seated. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, nice to see a bunch of people back uh, after going through the COVID uh, circuit. And... Uh, and great to see a lot of you, uh, Jackie, Barbara, uh, uh, the Millettes, Cindy, great to see you. So um, anyway, uh, very, very quickly here, uh, turn off your cell phones if you haven't done so already. Greatly appreciate that. Um, we're in the book of James on Wednesday night. Um, we looked at the first half of chapter two this past week, and we'll take a look at the second half this upcoming week. Um, we have the women's uh, prayer time uh, this coming Thursday in the sanctuary here. And then this coming Saturday, we have our annual business meeting uh, and potluck supper. Potluck supper at 5.30, business meeting at 7 p.m. If you are not a member, you are still encouraged to come. You may come. We welcome you. We encourage you to come. Um, so we'll try to get to the business of uh, the church uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, we'll be voting on a new budget and um, also on um, accepting people into membership. Uh, regarding membership, I have a, um, a meeting uh, for those of you who are being interviewed for membership today. Well, after church, we will meet in the study. Uh, the elders, the two uh, representatives from each team, just give me a minute or so to uh, close things up here and um, uh, we'll start our meeting uh, right after the service. Um, we have discipleship a week from today after church. And um, I think that actually uh, concludes all of the things I want to highlight this morning. Anything else for the good of the congregation? So my wife's in Philadelphia, so I know she doesn't have an announcement. <laughs> okay, anything else? All right, Bob's going to come and lead us in our next song, Blessed Assurance. Please stand.
Our offertory thought comes out of Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Uh, the Apostle Paul says, Not that I speak from want, he's talking about material things, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. Uh, contentment uh, is a pearl of great, great price. Uh, I, I pray that all of us are content uh, with the material things in this world. Uh, Bob, uh, Drew, please come forward. Bob Campbell, would you ask the blessing this morning, please? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your stay, Lord, and for your love. Pray that you'll be with each and every one, the gift and the giver. Use this money for the furtherance of your word, Lord, and we pray this in your name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Uh, before I lead in a word of prayer, uh, where is Patricia Fogel? Ah, you're hiding behind uh, some people there. Uh, welcome, Patricia. It's great to see you. Uh, we're excited that God brought you through the last surgery. And anyway, good to see you too, Barbara. And who's the little one there? Madeline Rose. I'm sorry? Madeline Rose. Madeline Rose. Hi, Madeline Rose. Okay. Anyway, good. Great to see you, folks. Great to see you. Uh, let me see. So, very quickly, uh, Rose Mulqueeny uh, was moved to West Bridgewater Life Care, uh, getting over pneumonia. Keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, Edie Jackson, uh, Mickey Tilson, uh, Jerry Hartgrove. Um, are uh, shut in, and um, we pray you lift them up. Uh, Fred Legler, uh, Keith, great to see you. Where's Keith this morning? Hey, Keith, uh, Keith's up top. Great to see you, Keith. Continue to pray for Keith uh, as his foot continues to heal from uh, the amputation. Uh, God is great. God is good. Uh, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for each heart that's here, and thank you for making us a part of your church, uh, the church of the firstborn, uh, the living one, the one who is alive forevermore. And Lord, we pray that you would visit our church family today in each heart here, uh, and that we um, would uh, get away from ourselves, our problems, uh, the things that weigh us down, uh, whether it's sin or our own thoughts, and that we would uh, look at the Lord Jesus and that we would uh, soar on eagle's wings, that we would be encouraged, that we would not grow weary or lose heart, uh, that you would just bind us up. Uh, we thank you that you bind up the brokenhearted and a smoldering wick you don't snuff out. 
and um, we, we thank you that you know our frame because you uh, became flesh and blood like each and every one of us. You, you, you know what ails us. You know when we hurt. You know uh, when we're just so discouraged. You know, uh, Lord, when we're physically not feeling well. Uh, you know when we're not uh, spiritually connected to you. And Lord, uh, truthfully, there are times where you seem so, f so far away uh, because our sin and our lack of devotion uh, creates that separation. Uh, but we thank you uh, for your eternal promise that you'll never leave us nor forsake us, uh, that you always walk by our side. Uh, even when uh, we, we go off the reservation, even when we sin, um, even uh, in our hearts and uh, darkened hearts and minds, uh, when we can't seem to find our way out, uh, you're, you're there. You're always there. And we bless you for that. And we pray that we would find great strength and great comfort uh, and great solace in, in the fact that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Uh, thank you for Keith that's, being, that, that's here today. Uh, continue to uh, heal his foot. And thank you uh, for um, the way he graces our, co our congregation. Uh, lift up Rose Mulqueeny this morning, Lord. Encourage her heart uh, and uh, bring healing. Use the, the medical staff to get her back to where uh, she can go, go back to um, the uh, assisted living. Uh, pray that you would visit Jerry uh, Hartgrove this day. Thank you that he's able to go to church each morning at the Baptist home where he's at. And uh, we pray that you would uh, comfort and encourage uh, Mickey and Edie Jackson. Uh, also, Father, too, thank you for Patricia Fogal being here as well. And I do pray that you would also visit uh, Fred uh, Leg Legler in the Middleborough Nursing Home. Uh, uh, that he would sense your presence and your goodness and your love and your grace. Uh, and I pray that uh, we would all sense that this morning as well. Uh, Father, touch uh, Bill Hurley's back uh, that he might be able to go on vacation this upcoming week. And we lift up Annie uh, with uh, her uh, vertigo issues and uh, all the other uh, requests, Lord, that uh, are unspoken uh, maybe we don't know about. Um, we uh, pray that you would minister in that way. Uh, also, Father, to uh, lift up um, Cindy and her family with the loss of her dad. Um, and thank you again that you bind up the brokenhearted. And there's always hope with you. And um, so I pray that you would uh, comfort and uh, keep them during this time. And we want to give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. Thank you, Lord, for putting up with us, for striving with us, for the way in which you love us, and for the way in which you shepherd us each and every day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, Drew, you're going to read some scripture for us? First scripture reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and the church Bible that is on page 1060. Philippians 4, 4 through 9, page 1060. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Our next song, uh, Who Am I? Uh, 
nothing without him and everything in him. Amen? Good stand.
second scripture reading this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31, and that starts on page 646 in the church Bible. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, page 646. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary or tired. His understanding is inscrutable. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who lacks might, he increases power. Though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles, they will run and not get tired, they will walk and not become weary. What a fitting uh, passage of scripture, um, especially in this day and age. It's, uh, things can get pretty weary, amen? Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, um, what you've laid upon my heart, I pray that you would use in our lives and hearts today. And in my weakness, I pray that you would be made strong this morning and that you would speak. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After eight years of saving for the trip, the long-awaited day arrives and the view is breathtaking. You're on the edge of the Grand Canyon looking out across the vast beauty and when all of a sudden the wind blows really hard at your back. Since it was so unexpected, you lose footing and you plummet to your death. That is how disappointment feels, full of fear and very permanent. This was written by a lady in an article, 25 Ways to Overcome Disappointment. I would say that that's a bit over the top, wouldn't you say? <laughs> a bit over the top. Uh, now, uh, it's not the end of life. Disappointment is not the end of life. I would not describe it in this way. It's not the end of the world. Uh, but we all have to overcome disappointment, right? Now, I, I want to give you a heads up. I may have a little longer message this morning, and I don't want you to be disappointed, okay? <laughs> but, but we all have to overcome disappointment. We've all experienced it. And some of us more so than others. And it can be a tough, very, very tough pill to swallow. It comes in the way of our shortcomings and our failures. It comes in the way of bad news medically or any other which way. It's always tied to self and our circumstances, situations, and people. It's tied to a not, not achieving goals, to feeling like you're a loser or a failure in life. Been there, done that. Uh, it can be found in making bad choices and decisions which actually seem to follow us at every turn in life, or not realizing fulfillment, or not realizing the dreams that maybe we had at one point uh, in time. And, and here's the thing, this is my understanding of it, but it's kind of like an emotional chain reaction. It, you know, when one thing falls, everything else starts falling. <clears throat> And they're like, they're like dominoes. And this is what, this is what happens. Uh, disappointment usually leads to a great deal of frustration, right? And frustration can lead to anger, and anger can lead to resentment or anxiousness. Uh, dis disappointment is often tied to discouragement regarding one's circumstances and people and situations. Disappointment can migrate into a cause and effect and what happens is eventually that disappointment leads us to a very, very depressed state of mind. Been there, done that, it happens. And if we don't change that process, <clears throat> then we get stuck. We stay there, right? Here's a quote from a very well-known minister. I dare not mention his name because I don't embrace his theology. 
I don't want you to say, well, Pastor Napick said he quoted so-and-so, because I don't, I don't want to go there. But I do agree with what he said. You must, quote, must make a decision that you are going to move on. It won't happen automatically. You have to rise up and say, I don't care how hard it is. I don't care how disappointed I am. I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I'm moving on with my life. I think that's true. We all get stuck. And if we don't move on, it doesn't usually present itself very well. Life is full of choices. Life is full of decisions. And we have to move on from disappointment. But here's the problem. We all struggle with the how, don't we? This is uh, Isaiah uh, talks about spirit, uh, renewal. It's a wonderful passage about how God gives strength to the weary. To those he lacks, he increases their power. To those who wait on him, we soar on eagles' wings. We don't run. Uh, we, we, we run and don't get weary. You know, and, and we notice here the scripture says we gain new strength, not tapping into the old reserves, and we become renewed. Now, I look at this passage and I say, I understand this to be spiritual. It's not physical. I mean, you know, uh, the physical always uh, is transformed uh, and the spiritual always uh, supersedes the, 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 the physical here. Um, but I look at this and I see it as spiritual renewal, emotional renewal, mental renewal, intellectual renewal. And when that happens, you typically are physically renewed, right? It matters not the age. It's a mindset. I ever have people say, say to you, hey, you know, you don't look that old. <laughs> right? Uh, because it's a mindset. You know, uh, age, you know, you need to say people, you know, you don't act your age, or, you know, some people act their age. Well, it's a, age is a mindset. And, you know, I've seen people get very, very old before their time because it's a mindset. They've embraced that mindset. And I believe that when we go with God and we wait on Him and we pray and we wait and we wait, He just always somehow elevates and lifts us up, does he not? I mean, you know, it, it can get really bad, but he always shows up. I, I, I was kind of thinking, I, I love to um, ruminate over the scriptures and some of the Old Testament saints. And, you know, some of them folks had it way worse than we ever had it, right? And, and they rose above it. And I, 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 I was thinking, all the trying and difficult circumstances and times, they had to have been disappointed. But, and, you know, and here's the other thing, too. Waiting upon God is not a given. It's a choice. You have to make a choice. And, and it's a decision we never regret. But those Old Testament saints waited upon him. Uh, consider Job. You know, if you can wade through all the discussions and all the words and, you know, the back and forth between him and his friends, Job waited upon God and he goes, I want God to show up and, and I want to plead my case. And God did show up and Job shut up. <laughs> but, but the point is, is that God showed up and he waited upon him. And, you know, you talk about Job, but he's, he's the poster boy for adversity and disappointment, right? The book ends with, he went away doubly blessed because he waited upon God. Abraham, we talked about him being the gold standard for faith. He was, I bet you he was extremely disappointed and frustrated. He, you remember he said to God, hey God, I, I want Ishmael to be the heir. He's like, no. I bet you he walked away thoroughly frustrated and disappoint, disappointed with that. You know, I think Abe was probably thinking like, God, I'm pretty old. I don't want to raise another kid, <laughs> you know. But he and his wife waited 25 years, uh, 25 years for the son of promise. And it wasn't the one that he wanted. But he worked through it. And Isaac was a great, great blessing to him and Sarah. How about Jacob? You talk about disappointment. You know, he worked seven years for, you know, Rebecca. I'm sorry, uh, Rachel. He worked seven years for Rachel. 
And he wakes up the following morning, and he's sleeping next to his sister. Now, that tells you he probably had a little too much to drink at the wedding party. But, but, now you've got another seven years that you have to work for the woman that you really love. Talk about discouragement. And then what about his children? Oh, my goodness, his children. You think you have problems with your children? This, this guy had more problems with his children uh, than you could shake a stick at. They were deceitful. Some of them were murderers, idolaters, adulterers. You name it. Everything that they, you could find in a kid, that's what they were. How about the apostle? And, that, and that's a great disappointment comes when, when your kids don't turn out to be the way you hope they are, right? How about the apostle Paul? I mean, this guy put his whole life into stuff and, you know, titles and achievements and accomplishments, and he considered it all rubbish at one point when he found Christ. But he was shunned by his peers. He was hated by the very people that he loved, his Jewish people. He went long hours on journeys, all sorts of hardships, trials, and discouragements. Read 2 Corinthians 12 sometime. What the Apostle Paul went through for the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got nothing on him when it comes to that. And then people left him during his most difficult times. You know, people left the city that he was ministering to. People did him much harm, backstabbed him. And then let's not forget about Jesus, right? I was thinking, I, 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 I believe that the Lord Jesus... Is the most mis was the most misunderstood person who ever walked planet earth. He created the world. John says the world never recognized him nor knew him. You talk about disappointment and frustration. That's huge. He's a man of sorrows, rejected by his own people, his own neighbors, his own family. And ultimately, all he poured himself into, all the disciples for three years. And they all scattered and walked away. And he knew it was coming. Talk about disappointment. I would have been ripping mad. <laughs> right? so, so the question is, how do, you, how do you overcome disappointment? Well, I said a little bit earlier, I think it starts with the renewal of the mind. And uh, let me tell you something, folks. I get to get up here each week, and you know, every single week I wait on God for something. And it, oftentimes it comes out of my own life and personal experience. But it is hard. And the, the longer you're in a church... You know, the harder it gets. But it's mind renewal. That's what it is. And, and Paul reminds us to renew the mind. Romans chapter 12, right? So that we're not conformed. Uh, we have the mind of Christ. We have to harness the mind of Christ so we don't conform. And it doesn't happen automatically. Just like waiting upon God doesn't happen automatically. It takes work. And it's practice, and it's practice, and it's work. Uh, notice what Paul writes in, in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9. Let me reread this, because these are wonderful scriptures, and I think it's Paul's way of saying, like Isaiah, wait on the Lord and you're going to be renewed. Be anxious for nothing, and everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which passes all comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is anything excellent and anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. It's the mind. These things you have learned and received and heard in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. So it's something that we have to take initiative with because this is the battleground. And if we lose it here, we lose. And, you know, I was kind of thinking, it doesn't, the, the mind has a way of playing tricks, doesn't it? it? It has a way of creating mountains and obstacles, does it not? I liken it kind of to, kind of like a, a hedgerow maze. You know, you kind of get in, and you wander and you can't find your way out. Uh, you have, this, have you seen that commercial where people, I, I can't even remember what they're, it's kind of a funny commercial, but uh, these people are touring a house and they're going through room to room to room 
And they finally get lost in the house and they see other people in the hallway. And the other people are saying, how do you get out of here? <laughs> well, it, it, the mind's kind of like that, you know? It, it's, it's, a, it, it's like a house of mirrors, you know? You get in, you wander, and you, and you just can't find your way out mentally. Uh, it's, it's a path of dips and turns. It's bewildering, right? Because oh, what, you know, we absorb all of these things and all of these situations. And we loop our thoughts. We go back. Kind of like the dog chasing its tail. We loop. And, and that's where we get stuck. So I was thinking, the scripture shares some very, very important biblical injunctions or imperatives to be mindful. Let me just read uh, very quickly here. Uh, the Apostle Paul spoke about pressing on. Not, not staying, but pressing on in the faith. Philippians 3. The writer of Hebrews talked about fix your eyes on Jesus. Gaze and fixate on him. Uh, Paul wrote about giving thanks in all circumstances. Goes a long, long way. Uh, now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think. Recognize that God can break through of whatever we're dealing with in terms of looping. Uh, also, 2 Corinthians 12, in my weakness he's made strong. That, we forget that, don't we? And so it's always important to bring it back to God. And, and you know, when we get, in, when we get in a, into disappointment, discouragement, into this mental mindset, it's, it's hard to jump that rut, isn't it? But Isaiah's take here is wait upon God and you're going to be renewed with new strength and you're going to soar and you're going to rise up. And that's, that's how it happens. But the question that I want to throw out here is, how do, how do we sort all this out in the meantime? Because my experience is that God doesn't always show up like five minutes later. And he doesn't show up always five days later. And maybe it's five months later or five years later with a situation. So what do we do in the meantime? I'm not a secularist. I think you know that by now. But all truth is God's truth. And so I wanted, I'm a, I'm a little bit interested in terms of how this thing works up here, how it ticks. You never know, hear, hear the expression, you know, what makes them tick? <laughs> uh, have you figured out what makes you tick? Uh, I haven't figured out what makes me tick yet, right? Let alone you folks. But I scoured some articles written by some, some psychiatrists. Now, I kind of filter and sort things because I don't always trust certain articles and disciplines like that because I believe that the scripture has everything here. But there's certain things that we can learn because, again, all truth is God's truth, right? And there are things that we can learn through behavioral research and how the mind basically works and functions. I mean, you know, it's kind of like gravity, right? You pick things up, you put them down. I mean, you drop it down, right? I mean, so there are universal principles here. And, you know, when you study human behavior, you can start to pinpoint certain things. So I'm careful about what I want to embrace, but I want to talk to you about some things that I think are really helpful to jump the rut, okay? So this is the first thing, and this is not what I found in any articles, but me personally, I always try to, and I kind of learned this somewhat from my mother-in-law years and years ago. <sighs> Hate to say that, I learned something from my mother-in-law. <laughs> but no, seriously, you know, uh, somebody always has it worse off than you, right? There's always somebody worse off. And so, and those people that have it work worse off, they get up every day and they push through it like a champion. And they don't have the woe is me thing. They push through it and they work through it. Uh, Drew was telling me this morning that, uh, you know, some of your uh, elite um, special forces guys that are retired, they talk about how get up every day and do something that you don't want to do. You press through it. And that's how they get their day started. Like, what do you say, Drew? They take a cold ice bath or something, or they jump into a freezing pond, you know, that kind of stuff. Stuff that you dread doing, right? It's a way to jumpstart things, right? 
But, you know, when you realize that somebody always has it worse off, you know, it realize, you know you're not alone, right? Um, there was an author that said, um, there, there are worse things than disappointment. I have lived through several of them already. So true, right? But disappointment is disappointment. And, and um, you have to work through it. So what are some of the useful tools I found here? Um, and, and some of these uh, you already know. Uh, that will re reinforce, and some of them maybe perhaps you haven't even thought about. So how do we get out of a funk in a mindset that might hold us back? Well, you know, you count your blessings. I'm not worse off. You count your blessings to what God has done and what he's given to you. It's not about what I don't have. It's about what he's given me and I do have, right? Uh, so you count your blessings. You focus on the positive. You know, when I was... Yeah, everybody, I say everybody, half the church was sick with COVID, right? I'm texting my brother. He's asking me how I'm doing and my mom how I'm doing. And it was, it was pretty rough, right, Bob, for the first couple days. <laughs> I'm texting, well, thank God that COVID hasn't changed the fact that God sent a Savior who is Christ the Lord and praise God for Christmas. And that's what I sent him. Uh, you know, and I think God gave me that when I was sick as a dog. But you have to be focusing on the positive, right? Uh, meditate and pray. I know many folks do that. But my experience, it changes my mindset. It changes my heart. I don't look here. I look there. And when I'm done praying, this is my experience. Burdens are lifted. Darkness is dispelled. My spirit elevates. And I find peace. And I feel really, really good when I'm done praying. Don't you feel really good when you're done praying? It's a wonderful, wonderful relief. It's not, and, you know, again, we talked about realizing you're not alone. Um, keep things in perspective. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the If it's not falling off into the Grand Canyon, as the lady said. Uh, I remember years ago, what would you say to me, Bob Ganaway? In the Old Testament, it says, and it came to pass. And it says that in the New Testament, and it came to pass. And this is New Testament today. It came to pass. Everything comes to pass, right? See the big picture is another thing, right? Remember and see the big picture because we get so focused on tunnel vision, we can't find our way out. And, and, and we, I talked earlier about the loop, the negatives, you know, the downs, you know, we constantly find that down cycle. Uh, here you go. I love this verse, Proverbs 3, uh, 23, 7. For as a man um, thinks within himself, so he is. And if we keep on looping negatively, we become negative. And nothing good comes out of that, right? Here's another principle. Don't become fixated on the disappointment. Let it motivate you to be an overcomer. Don't settle for the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual defeat. You've got to find, you know, God in all of it where we become an overcomer. Here you go. Find humor wherever it's possible. Uh, a Murray heart does good like medicine, Proverbs 17, 22. Are you okay, Murray? Yep. You need a minute or something like that? Okay. She's got something for you. I get this cough. Uh, after the asthma, I can't stop coughing. It's terrible. <laughs> a humor. But it's, it's wonderful. I, I signed up for clean humor jokes. I got, I got this one to my phone. I signed up. And I get them every day. And I look at them. And <laughs> some of them are really corny. Right, Drew? Right, Janelle? There's some of them corny. But they're so corny, you sit there and you chuckle. And some of them are really, really good. You just, you just laugh. But, you know, when you laugh, doesn't it feel great? I mean, right from the heart of the belly. I mean, to the point where you're dying and crying from laughing. It's, it's wonderful release, right? And it, but it goes a long, long way when I, be, when I look at the news or I see craziness in this world. It goes a long, long way, right? Here you go. Find, find the silver lining in the disappointments. That is huge, folks. But there is always a silver lining in everything. And that silver lining is God. He sent it for a reason, for a purpose. He's at work. And it, it, wonderful things happen. It creates character. Adversity creates character. 
Chaos brings opportunity. And with change, it usually brings spiritual growth in, in the strangest ways. I mean, I went through one of the hardest things that you could ever imagine, I don't know, 12, 14 years ago. I mean, one of the worst things that you could imagine. And, and through all that, it was guy, guy, God put me in the, in, in, in the furnace, refining and hardening and strengthening. And I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But that's what God does. It comes, and, he, and he shows up, he shows up, in my, my experience is, he shows up in, a lot of times in my failures and shortcomings. That's where I find him. You know, that's where the silver lining is. Because I find hope. And I get renewed when I understand that he's covered for all of my mistakes and all the mistakes that anybody else could ever make. So find the silver lining. Don't let disappointment get you bitter or become disillusioned. A lot of that happening. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Move on. Persevere and never, ever, ever give up. Plan for changing things up. Evaluate why you're down or why you're disappointed. I mean, I was going through some stuff earlier in the week. I try to evaluate, why am I feeling this way? Why am I thinking this way? Why, yes, I couldn't even find my way out of a paper bag, you know? And it's like, why, why? So I try to evaluate and reassess. <coughs> Keep a journal of your thoughts. It'll reveal amazing things like you say, man, I was really in a dark place. Why am I thinking that? It actually may also help you to find a way out of your circumstances. Been there, done that too, right? It may provide a way for moving forward. I've also found this to be true. Um, disappointment is more often with self than it is with any other person or thing. You look at self, right? Look at self in the mirror every day, you know? And that sometimes is the biggest hurdle. I said this years ago, you know, there, there's four ways people see you, right? Uh, or four ways you can be seen. The ways that you see yourself, the way you want people to see you, the way people actually see you, and the way God sees you. And I choose, I try to choose the way God sees me. It's a hard thing, <laughs> right? Um, but I've learned, you know, to try to deal with the discouragement and the down, the disappointment, and to change the situation. Because if I don't, I become a mental settler and dweller in that place, and I loop, and I loop, and I loop. And it's hard to get out. I also have realized you don't personalize it. Don't personalize anything. If people call you names, God bless you. Don't personalize it. Just move on, right? But when we personalize it, that's when we get in trouble, right? Remember that, remember that, uh, that Bud Light commercial years ago? What was it? Uh, you know, the frogs. The frogs. Let it go, Louie. Remember, remember the thing? Let it go, Louie. <laughs> they, they should have done the let it go, Louie, instead of the, you know, the, uh, you know, the transvi transvestite thing. Maybe their sales would still be up, like number one or something. But, you know, let it go, Louie, right? Got to let things go. If you don't let things go, it just eats away at you, right? Oh, my goodness. Really important to let things go. And when and why well, find that when I let it go, it does wonders for my spirit, my soul, and my heart. Right? Be realistic about your expectations. Yeah, you're looking at somebody who has perfectionist tendencies. I mean, I'm way better with it now, but I mean, like I did create I, I told the story years ago. I was here like the first three or four weeks, and I had one little typo in the bulletin. That's when I used to run the bulletin myself, right? One little typo, and I threw all 50 of them out. It was a typo. So you have to let, it, let things go, right? But realistic expectations, because if we don't have realistic expectations, we have mind distortion. And, and we have it here, and we only reach here, and then we're down. Here's another tool. I've learned this more recently through the years. Don't beat yourself up. <laughs> People will do that for you. It's okay, <laughs> right? Don't beat yourself up. Just let it go, right? Don't have, don't have a pity party. Don't become the victim. 
Don't embrace the victim mindset. Don't dwell on the negative. Because nothing good comes from all those things. And I take a look at our society. Isn't that what our society is fixated on? Victimhood, pity parties, beating other people up, beating self up, victim mindset. It's all destructive. That's why you see culture and society the way it is. It's self-destructive. Don't use labels. Here's the other thing I find. You know, it, it drives me crazy when people use labels. Labels for everything, right? Uh, everybody has to have a label and a this and a that. I'm this, I'm that, you're this, you're that, right? We got, we got more labels for people or their conditions and their situations and their circumstances, like your head spins, right? And to me, I think it's just the labeling defines and puts you right there. That doesn't allow you to rise up, in my opinion. And I think we get more problems as a result of it. I, I don't want to be like the world and like this culture and society. I don't want to fit in. Here's the other thing I've learned, too. I learned this with, when I was losing a lot of weight several years ago, right, uh, through a Noom app. You know, eating habits, right? But they use psychology and behavior-based, you know, um, recognition to make decisions. And here you go. And they said, don't label yourself. Don't say, I never. Don't say, I always. Don't say, I can't. Don't say, I won't. Don't say, I'm a loser. Don't say, I'm a failure. Don't say, I don't believe. Right? But, you know, you... you, you if you start doing that, you, you get into this pattern of not being able to jump the rut. You know, it's Etch-a-Sketch. You gotta, you gotta play Etch-a-Sketch. You know, remember that little game, you know, when you were a little kid, you write stuff and Etch-a-Sketch. And that's, that's how I approach every single day. Etch-a-Sketch. Because I don't want to live in the past. Uh, that's why I don't go to high school reunions. I don't want to live in the past. I just want to go forward. Uh, I came across an article in Psychology Today. It was entitled, Four Ways to Cover from Disappointment. But, um, and it was written by this uh, lady, um, doctor, and she talks about how disappointments can even make us better. And I believe that that's true. She wrote, learn from the disappointment. Success is often built on failure. Some of the most successful people in the world weren't successful until they encountered multiple disappointments and failures. And she, she gave some examples. I, I never knew this. Michael Jordan initially did not make his high school basketball team. Can you believe that? Isn't that amazing? Never made the basketball team. Steven Spielberg, great filmmaker, right? He was rejected by the University of Southern California film school three times. Their loss, right? The Beatles were rejected by three different record companies before they were signed. Isn't that amazing? And get this. The book, Chicken Soup for the Soul, was reportedly rejected by publishers a total of 123 times. And it sold more than 80 million copies. It's amazing. And, and there were thousands and thousands of stories of people overcoming. And I'm not talking about like in terms of success stories in the world, but I'm talking about spiritually overcoming. I, I love what Zig Ziglar, uh, God rest his soul, Christian author and motivational speaker said. Get this. It's not how far you fall, but how high you bounce that counts. It's true, right? And so, the heart and the mind is what we're dealing with here. And Satan would love nothing more than to fill with all sorts of garbage and negative and mental and depressive and discouraging and disappointing stuff. All day long, 24-7. And this is why, and I, I will tell you, if, if we're not personally, if we're personally passive, It'll be a huge problem because he'll bring it in like a flood. 
You know, some of my darkest days were always uh, Sunday afternoon, Mondays. Darkest, darkest days. Because when, when you share this and you preach this, boy, does he come after you big time. One final article that I want to share um, that I absolutely found fascinating, and I hope you do too. It was written by this uh, same lady author that talked about how dis disappointment can actually make you better. This article is entitled, How Your Thinking Affects Your Brain Chemistry. It's interesting, right? The key points of the article are, your thoughts are transmitted via neurotransmitters and other neurochemicals. Uh, try to keep it simple here. Uh, you can proactively, other key points, you can proactively release various feel-good neurotransmitters in your brain based on what you think about. Gee, I think the word of God, I think God knew that, right? You know, talk about whatever is lovely, whatever is pure, whatever good report, think on these things. Uh, here, another key point, your brain chemistry, get this, changes physical structures in your brain and body. Wow. So I'm going to share some thoughts here and some quotes from this article and try to keep it simple here. Bottom line, negative thinking can affect the brain to release stress hormones. And that becomes, that, that happens with the looping. Positive thinking can affect the brain to release, release neurotransmitters such as dopamine, that's the pleasure hormone, the feel good or the reward chemical, right? And this is what the lady says, quote, most people don't think about the fact that their thoughts are chemical and even less about how to use their thoughts to manage their brain chemistry. Your brain chemistry is your mental health. If it's optimally balanced, you feel good and function well. If it's unbalanced in some way, you start to feel not like yourself. Sounds familiar, right? And if it stays that way too long, you can end up with serious mental health disorders. The relationship between our thoughts and brain chemistry is complex and multifaceted. There are many different factors that can influence this relationship, including our genetics, environment, and life experiences. The key to understand, the, the key thing to understand, however, is that thoughts are transmitted via neurotransmitters and other neurochemicals in our brain. These neurochemicals are also responsible for your emotions. Your thoughts can also influence the release of stress hormones, such as cortisol. When you experience stress, your body releases cortisol as part of the flight or fight response. This can be helpful in the short term if you're responding to a perceived threat. However, if you experience chronic stress, and you regularly think about stressful situations, your body may release, release too much cortisol, which can have a negative effect on your physical and mental health. She goes on to write, thinking and brain chemistry is a two-way street. While your thoughts influence your brain chemistry, your brain chemistry also influences your thoughts. For example, if you're thinking about things that make you feel anxious, your brain releases more cortisol, which makes you feel even more anxious. And this creates the negative feedback loop that can be hard to break. Your brain's chemistry, she writes, not only affects how you feel, but also changes the actual physical structures of your brain and body. Research has shown that over time, changing what you think uh, changing what you think can change the size of certain regions of your brain. That's amazing, right? Research has also shown that neurochemicals released via your thinking have the power to influence physical symptoms in your body. And that may be part of the reason why we come into these loops. She writes, the relationship between the mind and body is complex, but the two cannot be separated. Your thinking directly impacts your mental and physical well-being via your brain chemistry. If, you, if you'd like to change, uh, take charge of this process naturally, 
optimize your brain's ability to function in a healthy way, there are a number of strategies you can try. And then she talks about practice mindfulness and, and mindful redirecting. That's basically, uh, in my, my take, her way of saying meditate and refocus, which I would say pray, meditate, focus, wait upon God, right? Here's the other thing. She talks about exercise regularly. Now, this is where we're going to most, most of us are going to be challenged, right? I know I am. She says, quote, regular exercise has been shown to have a positive impact on brain chemistry by increasing the production of neurotransmitters such as endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin levels. These neurotransmitters play a key role in regulating mood, motivation, and attention. That's my problem, Drew. <laughs> I got to exercise more. Here you go, getting enough sleep. Uh, this has become a challenge for me in more recent years as I've gotten a little older. Maybe perhaps you. She says, quote, good sleep is essential for maintaining healthy brain chemistry. During sleep, the brain flushes out the toxins and repairs itself, which helps to maintain the balance of neurotransmitters and other chemicals in the brain. Research has shown that sleep deprivation can have a negative impact upon brain chemistry, leading to mood disorders, anxiety, and other cognitive impairments. Huge problem, right? And then proper nutrition. Uh, something else I, I'm challenged with, maybe perhaps you, right? Uh, we, what we eat becomes the building blocks, she says, for the neurochemicals used in our brain. Stands to reason, right? We are what we eat. And then finally, and this is what I know most of you, if not all of you, are doing. She says, practice gratitude. Practicing gratitude has been shown to have a positive impact on brain chemistry by increasing the production of dopamine and serotonin, two transmitters that play a key role in regulating mood and motivation. By the way, this is why Christians and believers do way better in the world when it comes to healing and having hope. Because the world doesn't have hope and they don't heal that well. And, and it's a wonderful, wonderful blessing to stay blessed and thankful. Amen? So in closing, I'm going to reduce all this to we reap what we sow. What we do in the natural realm, we reap what we sow. And what we, it's true in the spiritual realm, we reap what we sow. Um, there was a, a quote I came across. It's kind of an amalgamation between... Um, um, this guy H. Jackson Brown and it, it's got some Mark Twainism in it but um, here's the quote 20 years from now you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did throw off the bowline sail away from the safe harbor catch the trade winds in your sails explore, dream and discover now that might sound a little bit over the top but you know, if we don't have goals and we don't dream and we don't explore and we don't discover and we don't wait upon God and pray and have healthy habits, we're going to be in that disappointment thing and that discouragement thing and that negativity thing a lot, right? We will. I've experienced it. So, so to me, this is uh, letting go of the woulda, coulda, shoulda, seeking to change things up, and getting out of the mental and spiritual ruts. And in my opinion, I think everything I've shared here today, and it's been a lot, all of these things are very, very useful to jump the rut. If you can't physically do, you can always spiritually do, and that overrides the physical and it, and it will transform how we think and how we live, even if we are sedentary. If we can't physically exercise, you know, it's amazing how God will take this to a, override the rest of the body. Amen? Anyway, that's what God has laid upon my heart. Uh, I hope it's been uh, food for your soul. Let's, let's pray. Uh, gracious Heavenly Father, um, you know us completely uh, through and through 
um, how the, the mind and the body and the spirit are wired and how we're all wired individually and how we're all different. Uh, but you know, you know us completely through and through and you, you know um, the times where we get really down and can't get uh, outside of our hearts and minds and we can't get out of our own way and we get uh, so disgusted and so disappointed and so discouraged with things and, and even life. Uh, and yet, uh, you've given us everything for life and godliness. You've given us the ability to pray and to be thankful and to wait upon you and to seek your face and uh, uh, seek your, your heart and your mind uh, to think rightly and to act rightly. And uh, you've given us everything, again, for life and godliness. And we bless you for that. Uh, but help us to uh, think on some of these things that uh, were shared today and help us to be creative and to find ways um, to change things in our life and our heart where we're more energetic, we're more productive, and especially uh, where we wait upon you for all things. We want to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for striving with us each and every day. We bless you for that, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, 575, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. 575, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms.